Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome back. So I'm back today with a special video with Asian Elite. We're doing a special collab. He's a YouTuber and a streamer. He do mostly does um, account reviews on his on his Twitch channel. He he goes and goes into your account and he basically fixes your account, um, tells you what to do, and he kind of specializes in that. He's also the creator of the 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 Monster Super League Super Guide. Uh, that basically goes through everything that you need to know in the game from golems, from rushing through mid game to uh, doing dragons and all that stuff. So yeah, he's, he's a really, really knowledgeable, knowledgeable player. Um, you want to introduce yourself a little bit? Uh, yeah, so I'm here um, with two accounts, uh, Ragnarok, or not Ragnarok anymore, not Six and Babloom. Um, I am uh, I use, mainly use my alt account for the Monster Super League Super Guide. Uh, again, I am actually the creator of the entire Super Guide, um, with some um, contribution from other players that provided some input to what I need to place on the guide to help the new players. So my main focus is to try to help the new players, try to get to make game as fast as they can, and also progress through the game towards the late game stages as fast as possible. But that's for their own terms, but I'm just here more of a support once you get to know, like once you get to talk to me on my own stream. Um, like he also said, where I do account reviews, um, I do have a sign up for that more likely, and there is some requirements that needs to be put through, and you are required to be on stream. Um, so yeah, um, that is me right now. Um, back to you. Dan. All right. So I think the first thing um, a lot of people would ask me about, and um, I think you you're very knowledge about knowledgeable about is the rush to mid game. Um, how you actually you know start start a new account as a new player? How do you get to mid game? How do you start farming the high levels of golems as soon as possible? All right. So what this exactly where Babloon comes into play with these new account? Um, Babloon is actually my like eighth alt account that I've done, and doing this multiple time as a new player, the moment you're able to get to chat, um, you always you add strong Ashmon lead. For example, this Dark Mona, he has a lead. We request. Do that through all chat. If you ran out of players in one channel, go to the next channel. Let's say I'm on 24, go to 25. Boom, done. Um, so the mid game rush guide is very consistent where you do use those players as to where you go to the scenarios here. You rush through every single one of these stages. You get through the first continent, go to the second mm -hmm. continent, completely finish the second continent through normal by doing Star Sanctuary normal. Repeat the process by going to the second continent again because you can't skip the first continent. So basically, you go to Pegasus Coast hard, um, go to Star Sanctuary hard, complete it, and then you can finally stop at Pegasus Coast Extreme. And that's where my mid game um, guide actually recommend you to start farming your EXP and jumps. The reason why I have people to farm Pegasus Coast is the fact that you need resist jumps and you want the four star one. Resist is extremely important for later. Like it's it's the fastest actually, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you don't have to go to the next stages in terms of seabed caves, magma crags, or something like that. Those will slow your run, so Pegasus Coast will probably be your fastest and most EXP, EXP um, efficient compared to the first continent. I mean, you can try it on the first continent, but you know what? I'd rather have people go on resist to prepare themselves for later game content. Late game content will require a huge amount of resist, but instead of going for these actual resist gem, you'll be going for the resist substat, for example. Um, in PvP, Late game resist is ideal for your defense team. So, you know your your uh, recommendation of going into chat and adding people. I never actually thought of that. That that's like pure genius. I I never never would have thought to to actually be able to do that. Like uh, I I would always <laughs> on my on my old account I would just like add uh, people that like the the game recommended to me. So <laughs> I only have like these low level people. I haven't thought of like going into chat and just adding these high level players. And then getting yep, a whole having, bunch of having those uh, fifty high level monsters as well as those five supporters mm -hmm. get you through these extremely fast. And you probably want to start using supporters once you get to Lunar Valley. Yeah. Um, normal. And it just plows through. Go back to here. You, like once you get to Pegasus Coast Extreme, your monsters probably you probably have at least one or two max level Ashmon if you're loving one Ashmon at a time, mm -hmm. which I highly recommend you to do because you can start stacking Ashmon with like once you get to the reps, you have one rep two max levels and then you're leveling your Ashmons basically before yeah. you get to the part where you have three max levels and then you're own. and you will be using like your you will be like once you build your water team 
Like, let's see here. I was able to farm Pale's Coast Extreme on my own with a Water Siren Evil 2, level 40, a Water Lat Evil 3, level 40, and a Water Mona Evil 2, level 40. And they're, they were on 4 star gem with at least plus 6. I used more towards HP flat as my beginning um, gems to get to Pegos Coast Extreme. So my water mode would be like HP flat, attack, attack percentage. My water lat would be HP percentage, HP percentage, and attack percentage. It doesn't really matter how you put your water lat because water lat is extremely tanky in general. And the water sign would be HP flat times 3, or you can use either HP percentage, doesn't really matter for the water mode. Uh, water mm -hmm. siren because she can self heal. And you use a water sign as the leader, always, because she is the one that you want to take the blood. So, and before you, yeah, sorry, go ahead. So would you recommend going to like Arya Lake and farming a variant water siren? Like, is that like top priority? Or I mean, once you get it to Evil 2, um, you can use it to farm Bagel's Coast for now. Um, I would definitely go back to Arya Lake on normal to farm for water signs, unless mm. you're able to summon the rest. I mean, you, you guys would be doing like, as a new player, you probably do up to at least 5, 10 plus ones before you stop. Before I t consider you to t stop doing summons and wait for a hero festival, something like that. Oh, or you I just see. wait for hero festival in general. Um, so yeah, Evil 2, Water Sign, definitely at Pegos Coast. Um, then, I definitely requirement, uh, require a Water Sign to be Evil 3 by the time you get to B7 Golems or B8 Golems. Um, because B8 Golems are completely different. Like, you're jumping from B1 to B8. Oh, and yeah, that's consider ML. Yes, you do use reps as well to get from B1 to B8. <laughs> um, like for example, B7, you probably need a wood valk or something like that. Yeah, I see. Um, so a little bit more question about the like using conviction gems versus the the other gems. You're basically uh, recommending using conviction gems mainly because Pago Coast is easier to farm. Or... Overall, easier to farm. Extremely easy to farm. And also because of the new update like last time it was i would probably say you can go for c like before the update where b8 was still light dungeon mm -hmm. i can you can actually go to seabed caves and farm there for yes. protector jumps because you can start working on a wood team instead to get you ready for b7 golems but now with the b8 golems with the fire the fire uh, golem all right yeah. so with this water team that you're making for pagos coast you can directly transfer that pagos coast team over to b8 using conviction gems only at plus nine for a full water team so i guess pagos coast now would be the prime recommendation um just because it's a new update i think um so just something i want to add for newer players that don't really understand the the um, why we're, we're farming this map is mainly because on pagos coast the monsters are fire and water and if you're using a water team, um, we basically have elemental advantage against fire, and your element is neutral against water. So you, you have mostly an advantage on Pagos Coast. And Alright, so um, you want to you wanna try like doing a run, you know, showing, <laughs> showing whatever your, team, your, your newbie team is for, for Pagos Coast? For Pagos Coast? Oh, yeah. but first of all, a lot of beginners like to do this. They will farm in either stages 1, 2, 3, and guess what? Mm -hmm. Your team will die. You're fighting against a Water Pinchy, which counters the same elements. So oh, the water, dang. Yeah, this is, what I've, this is what I've been running into a lot of problems with new players been asking me. is like, I can't do Pagos Coast. Like, which stages are you doing? I'm doing 3 for Gold Bonus. Like, Water Team is ineffective against that because a Water Pinchy would definitely just completely d obliterate your team. Um, the test is it as before as well. Um, primarily it was because of the double water pinchy, the double chance water pinchy, and I was like, no, go straight to six, go straight to stage six, they did it, they were like, oh, this is so much easier, I was oh, like, yeah. yep, <laughs> yep, <laughs> you probably only have problems with the chest, but the chest only accepts, you know, so, you know, there's not that much problem, so this was, um, so I had a water valve, but I did it without the water valve, so, if you guys want a clear demonstration, um, I did use a water sign here, a water mona, and I did try to have my water lat on the very last. Actually, my water lat was on the second part, but definitely um, that was just to make sure that the water, if the water siren dies, the water lat takes the next mm -hmm. until you're able to clear it. But now I actually prefer having the water siren, the water mona, your leveling ashmon, let's say water mona here, and my water lat. So the mobs usually go for the very first or the very last ashmon, typically. So. It's either water right. mode, uh, so in terms of efficiency, you definitely want your DPS tower to be in the center if you can. And you want me to do a quick run? Yeah, sure, sure. You can do a quick run. 
Now, you do have like better gems on them, but um, you can oh, basically yeah. do this with just four plus, star gems. Yeah, four star gem plus six recommended at least, and that's not that much gold if you actually conserve your gold. Make sure um, I should have made a guide on this part on whether what to spend gold on as a new player. So mm -hmm. you, you want to talk much, a, a little bit about that or? Uh, so ideally, a lot of people who spend their gold, they I I okay so. When you're leveling, when you're getting to Pegasus Ghost Extreme, don't upgrade your one, two, and three star gems ever. They're gonna be useless. Save okay. them until you get the four star gem. That's why you have the reps, right? I mean, you can do this 50, like you can do it 55 times a day, mm -hmm. which is good enough to get you some four star gem at least. If not, then just spend the rest of your time farming normals for the three star that you need. Um, do your gold dungeons definitely. Try to go as high as you can. If you know that you failed, then just stop there. That you know that's your break point. But once you're able to get like a Pegasus Coast team up to like level 50, you should be able to do all of the gold dungeons. Alright. Uh, um, another question is like, you know, how the bingo event and other events are giving a lot of like 6 star gems. Would it be worth uh -huh. upgrading the th those gems early on? Like it's it's actually quite expensive. And also the flat Pers ones. Yes, or percentage. Like percent, all the percentage are definitely worth it except crit damage, resist percentage. Always sell your crit damage and your risk percentage. Uh, resist is up to six star. Do not use any resist percentage. They, they are a waste of stat. Crit damage, I would say six star gems only are effective, but they need crit rate substat on it. Um, yeah. What else here? Crit rate gems, since you're gonna go for B8 anyways, you might as well just go for six star gems if you can. So right. you sell your five star and below. Um, let's see here. Percentage, everything else percentage, like attack, defense, HP percentage, definitely worth building. Yes, you can use it as a new player. You can definitely start upgrading early on. Um, Attack flat and HP flat, in my opinion, are probably the best out of auto flat that you can start upgrading early on. All right, all right. I think I, I think I did it right on my ult. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Like, see, if you're just like comparing for a four star gem to a six star gem, like four star attack percentage to a six star attack flat gem, attack mm -hmm. flat that six star attack flat definitely overrules a four star gem. Yeah. All right, yeah. there's my um, quick little two minute run here, which is basically your norm. If you really want to speed up your Pegasus Coast run, um, you definitely need level 60, which I don't have just yet. I've been all stuck at level right. 50 for a while. And you need SP Cycle. <laughs> right. That's about it for the Pegasus Coast part, though. Yeah, I think I think this is pretty good for like the rush to, to mid-games. Um, I think we can start moving on to Golems. Do you want to do B8 first? I mean, since this is... Like, the recommendation would be to start on B8 and then move yeah. down to B7. Oh, definitely. So, I have tested out in B8 where you can just use a water sign and a water lat. However, it takes forever, so I wouldn't really recommend it. Okay. It's just showing how easy B8 Golem was um, but, in terms of trying to farm it. They can two man it, like the whole thing? Uh, I did have a water mona in there actually, so it's more of a three man, but the water mona died, so the water sign and the water lat was actually two oh, manning yeah. it. Actually, the water mona died in the first wave, so yes, the two of them were actually two manning the entire thing dungeon. Actually, right, right. <laughs> um, later on, you really don't want a water lat at all. Well, mm -hmm. given the fact that if your DPS can one shot the mob, then you can bring a water lat or something that brings defense break on a three star skill because you know, three star skill defense break normally slows down a boss run just mm -hmm. because once you land a defense break, all your ash run goes for that one specific monster, yes, which is bad for your team. No, no go. So I did go with the Water Sign, Water Mona, uh, Water Valk, and a Water Lat first, alright, to uh, help me speed through B8, get my gold up and running. So instead of another Water Valk, let's see, another full farmable team, if you really want to save, uh, really want to spend a bit more time, I mean, you're spending your, quite a bit of time in Pegasus Coast anyways, mm -hmm. so you're bound to find a large amount of Water Mona, so instead of uh, having the Water Valk there, you can actually go with Water Sign, Double Water Mona, and a Water Lat, hell, you can even go for, this is, let's say, fuck the Water um, Lat, alright? You can go for three water monas. Oh yeah. <laughs> so one water sign, three water monas. That BA run is just super fast, all right. So yeah. let's see. Here. I think my gems are still four star. No, no, no. My water sign is now six star gems because I wasn't using her for dragons, um, farmable dragon team wise. So it did work. It did work for B one, uh, B two. No. <laughs> uh, so yeah, six star gems. I usually had her at four. So the way I built my water sign was just straight up HP, HP percentage, HP percentage, HP percentage. All right. Um, her, her, her recovery is more like once you th those are for four star gems, right? Yeah, this, um, this I, is for a four star gem build. You want yeah. you want just HP triple HP. Triple HP for four star gems, yes. and once you get to six star, HP HP recovery is fun. All right, all right. 
Um, so. So what, how would you gem your Monas, your, uh, like, your other my monsters? Monas? Yeah. Okay, my Mona, I definitely, when I was using, um, oh, so she actually have a hybrid right now. Four-star gem-wise, HP flat, she's HP percentage now because she's level 50 with the over 19,000 HP. Um, mm -hmm. I was using HP flat, attack percentage, attack percentage, and I was using for Pagos Coast and, um, this dungeon specifically. So basically, yeah, all your Mona. basically, um, at, like, where would you say it? Generally, um, for for water Mona, like, would you rather use HP percentage over HP flat? HP flat was more of a level forty kind of thing, so right. you can use either HP flat or HP percentage. I prefer the HP percentage. So for uh, the for, for the long term, you just want to upgrade the HP percentage gems and actually have that on her because you'll you'll eventually bring her to five stars, right? Yep. So once you hit five star HP percentage, more viable. Once you get to six star, you definitely want towards the HP percentage because she's gonna have a huge HP base pull. Hmm. Yeah, that's. That, I, I guess so. Um. So you, compared I, to the water belt, though. So uh, sorry for the interrupt, but the water I, belt, for example, the evil two low fifty has below mm -hmm. nineteen thousand. So the, the water belt definitely re, uh, prefers the HP flat gem instead. Let's see what I actually have. It's actually yep, quite HP interesting. Um. So. I see that you have the Water Valk. Did you choose her for your Contract Hero? Yep, I didn't use my Water Valk as my Contract Hero. Because um, this was before B8 was changed. I was thinking I could use a Water Valk for B8 Gauntlets, but you know what? They changed it. Mm -hmm. I even benefit greater from that, so it was good for me type of thing. So, uh, I, it, actually correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the Contract comes out during Heroes Festival, whenever a Heroes Festival comes out. Like, that's when the Contract actually begins. Uh, no. The contract starts for any new player that finished their, like, once you d finish the Light Victoria contract, you start on the Heroes uh, contract. Oh, I see, right I see. That yeah. makes sense. So you do, ha you do have to have seven days in game consecutively before you start the Heroes contract. So it's a 21 day total, basically. Alright, so, um, would you say it's possible to be rushing into B8 before you finish the contract, or? It is or, possible, yes. yes. All right. Depends on the amount of time that you farm. You do get it. Like, let's say you're, if you're spending a large amount of time farming, um, then yeah, I think as a, like if you're willing to pay, pay even a little bit, then you definitely boost your, yourself a bit. Because the amount of stamina right. you get as a new player is extremely huge. Mm, that that is true. Mm, so I guess for new players, the the best thing would be to grab like grab the water valk when she comes out and start collecting water gleams. So when you actually get her, you can get her to evil three, something like that. Or water evil two, valk, two. Yeah, I mean. evil two. I would either oh. say go with the water valk because it's either the water valk or the wood odin is more towards progressing uh, mm -hmm. for new players because you can use the wood odin for B seven, which is the yes. next harder difficulty in terms of B eight, in my opinion. Um, because it for like you said, for B eight can just have a water side, water mona, water mona, water light. You don't need a water valk in there anywhere at all. Um, so, so I would highly recommend a wood Odin if you can. So for like completely new players coming into the game, wood Odin is actually more recommended than water valk. Yes, sir. With this all new right. update. Okay, I see. I see. Um, yeah, I guess you can. You should probably do a run. I don't know which team you want to do it with. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to do it with the water valve because I don't have a fourth unless I just want to unless you want oh, yeah. me to show up with like a three man but that's gonna take forever and I just don't right. want to take forever. <laughs> yeah, just just run run it with the water valve. I mean, I think people get get the idea. Um, right. yeah, the water lab would also build HP defense attack. I actually put an extra attack and jump in there just to get some DPS in or try to. You know, I was actually looking through shortcuts to like not catch so many so many Monas on my alt. I was trying out like ra I, I wanted to try out weird random monster like the water brawn like that horsey thing. Uh, if you look at the kit, it's not as effective compared to what the fire brawn has to offer. Because the fire brawn, I would definitely like um, more towards um, B9 golems. The reason why I don't yeah. like the fire brawn in general is because it's single target, so it slows down and run quite a bit. But it can be used if you can try to get a variant lead. You can. That is true. Um. You know, I was just looking for shortcuts. I mean, obviously, <laughs> the best yeah. thing you could do is like just build a whole bunch of Monas. And... Yeah, there's not that many water farmable Ashmons that I, I highly recommend. I, when I looked through it the first time, I made a whole Excel sheet on it and I completely forgot where I put it, so 
um, I know for sure the only really good farmable ones would be the water lab, which hopefully you, people did not sell, throw all, throw away oh early to rebirth, because there have been people that done it and try to. They did. I did. I've done account reviews for people who threw away water lads. Oh so God. I like it, it. Wasn't really that hard for me to recover their entire account because they were having problems trying to get to B seven. like, oh, that's easy. Just make all these ash ones, you know, because. B B7 is different than B8. You don't really need a water lad, obviously, now yeah. um, with the new B8 system. But having that water lad early is just saving resource, in my opinion. So yeah, that is true. It's also, in terms of sorry, it's also ahead. very easy to get him to Evil Three. Like it's he's one of the easiest monsters to get to Evil Three for a three star. Oh, definitely, just because of the evil the the nat twos that you get in from Mirage, um, Mirage mm -hmm. Ruins. Yeah, Mirage Ruins yeah. Um, with lats. And let's see, what else? What, what were you gonna in say? Oh yeah, in terms of like good evil, t like Nat Two Water Ash ones, farmable wise would be. And this is specifically built for tie-ins though. Um, we're talking about like the Water Katines and the Water Lumo because Water Lumo is attack up uh, Nat Two Healer and Water Katines defense up Nat Two Healer. And I can't yeah. believe they actually put those two. As that too, but I can't really complain because you really, I really like their five star skin. You know what? I even use a water katine on my Nat Six account, which oh, is yeah. worth, <laughs> yeah, which is worth fifty thousand dollars, right? This is this is an account that was given to me, so just in case you guys think I spent fifty thousand dollars here, there's no way in hell. But <laughs> <laughs> I didn't use a water, I do use water katine. I'm planning on building a second water katine for my Nat Six account because they're amazing healers to have for time battles. But time battles are more of a progressive type where my entire guide actually prepares you for Titan battles because you're making so many different Ash Bonds in general. We're yeah, trying to, true. at least. So there it is, 2 minutes and 27 seconds. I mean, I can definitely speed this up once I get some more 6 star gems onto them and get them to level 60. Mm -hmm. But 2 minutes and 27 seconds, that's pretty fast for a new player, really. Yeah, for like a 5 star five star team. Yep. Like, yeah, it's, it's really good. <laughs> Alright, so... Alright, so that's pretty much it for B8, I think. Mm -hmm. Alright. I guess... Well, we're gonna B7. have to move on to B7. Alright, so this is my fun little thing when you know how everybody just tells you, Oh, you should probably have a wood mile lead. Oh yeah, they're definitely correct. Mm -hmm. Kind of. Um, I mean I guess you could try with a water sign lead, but remember you're going water versus water instead of wood versus water. So I prefer having as much attacker as possible. So as you can see here, I have a double squares. Um okay. a squares is a nat two farmable in Phantom Force. And their kit is double defense break, which I love the most. And oh, sixty percent. <laughs> yeah, sixty percent for the three star and forty percent for the five star. I mean, the five star is fine, but this many defense break, what can go wrong? Um, maybe it can slow you down because again, three star defense break. Everybody focused one Ashmon, um, mm. so sometimes it's not that great to have. But I prefer it on this uh, golem specifically, yes. um, just because of how high of a defense water um, golem has. So in my theory so far, water golems has the most defense, right? Fire yes. golem has the most attack, and wood golem has the most HP. Right. So that's my conclusion so far. That's why I have so many defense break on a water golem, especially with the resist down. That's why mm -hmm. I have wood mile with three star defense break as well. With the resist lead, because water golem has petrification, Petrification slows down your team. Petrification can actually cause your team to die completely because if your water sign gets petrified, then you're done. Um, especially when your um, team is low health. And my water sign is basically the ash. Your healer should always have the highest resist out of your entire team. So you do want to try to focus on resist if you can yes. on your healers. Always. This is in every general occasion. Um, dragons, golems, titans. Every single one of them. And that's why I like having a wood my whole lead because of her extra resist. And I do have a max uh, resist lead, twenty percent total. So that's a whole twenty percent oh, nice. there. That's really sweet. So overall, all of these Ashmon have over sixty percent resist already, especially with conviction gems. If they're on still on the conviction gems again, I use this exact team for Dragons B one, mm -hmm. and so I actually boosted their gems plus uh, to six star already. So I don't have their six star gems anymore. Oh, but I have to. This can farm dragons B1 as well. Yeah, yep. Full farmable team that can farm B1 dragons so far. Oh, um, nice. Are, are you able to do it without course. without um, revives? Like. Yep. Just because I just upgraded a gem to plus uh, six star gems because dragons is more of a 
high tier mid game mm -hmm. where you do need better gem quality. So Dragon's more of a gem quality than level quality. Um, is what I want to say so far. I haven't tested B2. I tested B2. This team failed in B2. I'm building my B3 team right now. Dragon's B3 and then B4 as well. Alright, alright. I guess you can go in and test this out. Alright, just go ahead. You know, this is actually really smart. I never thought of uh, using the word squirrels. <laughs> oh, wood squirrels are amazing, man. <laughs> I love wood squirrels. I know, that Nat, I know like people are get turned mm -hmm. off by Nat 2s, but this is one of those games where two-star Astromod actually provides an advantage in most type of situation, mm -hmm. which is amazing for new players, in my opinion. That's why I love playing Monster Super League, because creatability, I mean, your creativity can actually make you do either stupid things or all smart things. Like, instead of scores, you can actually have a Wood Slime. A wood Slime has a reverse kit of what a Wood Scores has. 40% defense break for three-star, 60% defense break for 5-star. Uh, for five star. Wood, score, uh, wood Slime actually has more HP, but a little bit less attack than Wood Scores. So instead of Wood Scores, you can use Wood Slimes instead. Alright. That, that's actually pretty... That's that's pretty genius. Like, <laughs> I, n I never would have thought of that. <laughs> would have completely looked past the, the Squirrels. I, you know, I, I, honestly, I've never actually used any of the, the 2 stars. I never even considered... <laughs> they're amazing man like this is what i do when i got really bored i mean not really bored but i just want to provide more content for my stream if possible by just making these random thing like random ashmons and hell they even work like for this example here this entire team here all four star gems let's see here um from left to right by wood my was built hp defense attack percentage plus 12 because she's the main tank um, water side was HP, 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 percentage or flat, plus 9, and my scores were actually built HP, defense, attack, plus 9, conviction set, and they were talking about 4 star jumps here as well, yeah. that's the first time I was able to clear it, but the, the clear was pretty long, it was 5 minutes, um, but then again, that's expected because you don't have the good gems yet, 5 minutes is alright for a new player, but once you get those gems in, your runs should be significantly a little bit quicker, so maybe just run the bit faster or slower, I don't even know, actually. You know, there's actually one advantage to using the, the scrolls. I'm not sure if you built them before your B8 team on this account, or before they made the golem changes, but you can I actually... I did, actually. Um, like, you know, if you if you are capturing two stars, you can actually catch quite a few of them, and you can try to get a scroll with, like, triple square. Exactly. And then you can use your B8 gems, which are all square, on the scrolls. That is, a, that is a possibility, yes. I actually built them towards diamond because it was before the patch. I made this account before the patch. Um, Alright. So I did build two scores that has at least two diamond slots on it. Mm -hmm. I was already farming golems before the patch came. So, so B7, I was already farming. B8, I was actually the, I was actually skipping B8 to build B9 first. The, the old meta was yes. B7, B9, B8. Now it's yes. B8, B7, B9, or B8, B9, B7. Doesn't really matter mm -hmm. um, between the two. So this is actually yeah, it's, it's, it's it's looking pretty good. <laughs> Everybody gets sapped because I have no resist on them. Because <laughs> I changed them to six star jump, but you know what? They don't care. They have six star jumps on them. Plus twelve. Yeah, th I think at this point, um, for the scrolls, you can definitely expect to have six star gems on them. Especially, you know, since they're two stars, it's pretty easy to farm. So like getting triple square isn't too hard. Mm, so I just did a three minute run there, but that's with like six star gems, definitely. Yeah, it's not that hard, really. I wouldn't say so, at least. So far, it, the guide has been extremely, it's a huge success for most of the players out there and most of my viewers already. Like, you, if you're following the guide step by step, right, mm -hmm. you should be able to get to B7, or, well, l last time, you should be able to get B8 now in at least one week if you're doing it step by step, back to back, continuously farming, you should be able to do B8 in, in around one week, all right? For yeah. the B7 guide, it used to be two weeks. Right. And then oh, there's yeah. people that's that's already been doing like there's already people um, one month and a half in they're already able to farm all B7 to B9 and already starting on B10 stuff like that. So that's good so far. I'm actually proud of that. So there's actually also a chance of it being faster because um, you could always summon some like really strong monsters that can like carry exactly. you through. Oh, definitely, definitely. Man, this B9 so, team is amazing. Holy shit. Yep. Double fire Kaling, the fire mile for the resist lead. Oh my also god. Also, max resist. Yeah. 
Uh, it used to be Firebrawn actually on the fourth spot here, but with this Firebrawn, because it's single target, mm -hmm. my runs were not 100% consistent. It was actually 95% consistent. So actually every, over almost every like 19 out of 20 runs, mm -hmm. after that 19th run, it would always be a fail usually. So it's RNG based just because of this Fire Coal. Um, so I did swap them out. They are now six star gemmed as well because I am preparing them for B3 Dragons actually. Um, so oh, nice. this, I should be I should be able to have a VOD about that later on this weekend, this upcoming weekend. Um, hopefully it'll become a success, but I am planning on using this for Ashmont. Again, Farcateen, Nat 2, um, only available through the Shady Shop, so definitely keep yeah. an eye out for those. Um, and then Farmable, obviously, because Water Continue Farmable in, I believe, uh, let's see, Magma Craigs. Whatever that seabed caves and yeah. I think there's one more. The, oh, and what are water sardines, I believe. The uh, there's three maps that have the coteens. The Aria Lake has the wood ones. Um, yeah. Seabed and Magma Crags have water ones. All right. Yep. Easy to find. Uh, and <laughs> I think you're 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 like showing the like extreme here, like where it's like completely 100% farmable. Because I think 90% of the players won't have to get to this point. Like they'll probably yeah. have like e maybe a wild thing or you know like a fire wild thing, maybe a fire. I don't know some what's a strong fire nat five. Like I have no idea. <laughs> fire Sanzang is now a passive healer, yeah. so you don't even need a fire continue to get a fire Sanzang, which I have here. I haven't even tested her out yet, so I don't feel like it now. <laughs> it, it, it would probably work, you know, she's, she's just that good. Yeah. <laughs> she's amazing. Fire Sanzang yeah. and Water Burst, their difference in healing is not that big. It's probably like a whole 500 HP to 1,000, maybe 2,000. Still mm -hmm. not that big of a difference, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Which is, passive healing is always good. Three star healing, oh man, it's amazing. Especially based on own HP. Yeah. So you probably won't like have to do something like this, but you know this is just nah. in case you don't have anything, you can actually just build this team, you know. Uh, if you if you have like an evil two firewall thing, evil two fire vampire, evil two fire supplements, I definitely recommend building those guys instead over this team because they're mm -hmm. able to self heal, and yeah. not to mention it's so easy to get square gems out to get that crit rate in. All right. Yeah. If they're crit based, I mean the wire, fire wall fang, you can just build straight up three times attack percentage. That's it. Fire vampire HP attack crit rate. Fire Sucklis HP attack crit rate, something like that, um, or attack attack crit rate, doesn't really matter, it's just the fact that they can heal themselves, which makes them viable for B9, since B9's main damage is not because of their physical damage, it's because of their sap damage, yes. right? That's why I always have as high resist as possible for my teams. So, um, uh, you actually went through your gems really, really fast, I didn't actually, you want to oh, talk no, a little bit yeah. about... I can go over them now, I did do, like, I did upgrade them, like I said, but I did already test them out with plus 12. Four star mm -hmm. conviction gems. Yes. Um, my fire horn is actually built HP percentage attack attack, um, four star wise. She's now HP attack still attack attack still. Um, I'm actually trying to replace this four star with another six yes. star attack gem once I get the chance. Um, let's see here. My fire katin. My fire katin was actually built. So she's still on four star gems actually. Um, I built her HP HP recovery. You can actually build her HP recovery recovery as well um, to All get right. that extra orb in. Um, specific for a healer, but she is my highest resist, like always. Um, it should be because you don't want her to get sapped. Yep. The only thing that's dangerous to a fire team would be the retribution, and that's about it. If you're building HP recovery, recovery, so that's the only thing you really want to watch out for. But the higher the resist, the less sap that built this entire team will get. So that's why yep. I really recommend building a fire myho if you can't. If you cannot build a fire myho, then you want to use a fire broad lead, um, which I don't have unfortunately because of their HP percent increase. Yeah. And you definitely want to build a fire mustang a little bit tankier, so probably HP, HP attack, or HP defense attack. Normally I wouldn't recommend defense for this um, Jolin specifically, because you already have 50% damage negation because of the elemental counter, right? Yes. So you already have that, so defense is also useless against sap, primarily because sap just chews through defense. Um, and if you're just using a defense gem instead of HP, um, right, so you have a larger danger towards, uh, towards retribution. Which deals a flat damage, which is up to eight thousand, I believe. Eight thousand for wood golems. I know it's ten thousand for dark golems. So probably eight thousand for um, B nine. Um, in terms of flat damage towards your one Ashmon. Yeah, I completely forgot that this boss has retribution. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's basically a random debuff. Uh, for those of you that don't know, that does like uh, it basically just deals like true damage to your your uh, random unit. 
Yep. After Which is turn. basically every fifth uh, Ashmon that attacks it um, mm -hmm. gets it. That's what I think. All right. Uh, so my fire canling, they're both built the same HP attack attack. You want to try to get as much DPS as possible if you want to get through um, uh, wood uh, wood golems. I turn, yeah, I currently have them built HP attack attack in six star, but I definitely built them as four star gem as well. It's HP attack attack. It doesn't just uh, changes. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in. All right. Yes. You can actually use a fire canling lead too, but um, like I said, having higher the re the higher the resist, the longer the survivability towards the golem. The wave in this in the wave uh, for B9 golems are extremely easy to get through. They do yes. absolutely no damage. Again, they also sap, but their sap is not as worse compared to what the golem has to offer. Because the golem, I've seen um, in the past yeah. where <laughs> an Ashmon had eight sap stack of sap on him. I was like, this guy's yeah. done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good times, good times. I think at this point, um, you know, since since you're already at the point where you're able to farm B8 and B7, you're kind of expected that you could have access to 6-star gems. Like, you don't have to limit yourself to using full only 4-star. No. Yeah, no, at this point. I just want to prove to people that you are able to do it this way if you really want to. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, this is just show you, like, the midpoint. And then again, this is, like, also... Like once you get to B9, B9 is also team combo dependent, and that's once you get to B10 as well. So team combo does play a role to how your team operates in um, Gauntlets. For example, uh, let's see here. I did it on rag. I, I on my last alt, I tried to for go for B9. I completely put like I put a fire Odin in there. I put some random Ash Mons in there, and they com it mm. failed. It failed with six star gems. All right. So this 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 dungeon here is more towards team uh, combo. Um, team combo requirement basically yeah. um if you get the right team combo in then you're fine i definitely highly suggest you to build like double fire canling if you don't have like any of those sexy little nat fours or nat five ash months yes don't got you know um fire canling is a farmable in lunar valley yeah yes. lunar valley and definitely farm it on normal if you can and believe me these guys pop out like flies during exotic events <laughs> oh yeah yeah it's, that, that is true Alright, this is actually oh, yeah. looking pretty fast. Oh yeah, uh, I believe it's like 3 minutes now, 3 minutes to 4 minutes average, I mean still pretty slow, then again, you can want a very very fast run, level 60s, um, what's, uh, oh yeah, if you, for B9 specifically, if you really want extremely fast run, 4 mm -hmm. attackers, no healers, level 60, 6 star gems, completely jumped out as well, so that's your fastest run you can get, also if you can actually put one fire Ashmon there with an SP Siphon, SP Siphon always speeds up a run no matter what, usually. As your little end game to, I guess yeah. end game type to get to um, like one minute, one minute, thirty seconds, something like yeah. that. I mean, on my Nat Six account, I'm only able to clear it in two minutes or less, around one minute thirty to two minutes average at the moment. Because I don't really care much about B9. I'm only farming B10 at the moment. <laughs> yeah, it's the same for me. Like I, I farm B10 faster than I can farm B9. <laughs> <laughs> Like, B9, B9 is just extremely tanky, so mm -hmm. honestly, you probably don't even need defense down. But the, that, that defense down, the reason why I bring defense down is primarily because of the defense up that the right minion actually provides. And not to mention the right minion is probably the main reason why most people fail this golem on auto is because that right minion is so goddamn tanky. So having yeah. probably sap, if you can bring sap to this, then yeah. I guess you should be fine as well. Definitely sap, because again, with golem, is HP consistent, extremely uh, developed around the HP part. So, I like, yeah, you don't really need to bring defense break, but I just like to have that defense break there, just negate the defense up. But you know what? My my entire team just completely obliterated that right minion. So, looking good so far. Yeah. Oh, and you know what? Fire team also saps on a three yeah. star. So, <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> also that's a good reason. It's a little bit of a bonus. <laughs> it's a little bit of bonus. All right, so we are done with B9, B7 to B9, full farmable team for every single uh, three of them, um, except number, uh, except B8 because they didn't use a water valve. All right, I think that's pretty much what I planned for this collab. Just talk, talking a little bit about like you know progressing through the early to mid game. Um, is there anything you want to like, kind of end with, or maybe if you want to talk a little bit about B10, I'm not, I'm not sure. B10. It's currently under theorycraft so far. Um, I know there's a large amount of, hey, let's build a light Cosmo out there. I'm trying to build something that doesn't require light and dark units as well. I'm building a full mm -hmm. elemental team. Remember, B10 is also 
Like you guys, what I meant to say is B10 in B10 sets the, with the new lower resist down, and I guess Fantasy Gaming already did it with like a full sap team. Sap is viable. Billy, bring sap, make them tanky. You should be able to clear B10 basically. What? So what I'm theory crafting for uh, for farmable so far would be a water sign, a water myho, and a water mona so far. With my fourth probably being another water mona. Or another water healer, probably a water lumo or something like that. It's just for me to test around a bit. I'm trying to build an effective B10 team. As long, like, remember out there, guys, um, try to be consistent and then efficient. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to go for both, which you guys shouldn't try to do, but I'm trying to build these team ahead for new players um, to try to build themselves in case they don't have anything else. I try to provide templates, and those templates will be found on my guide as well um, once you get to the golem section. Um, so let's hear. Where's my water myho at? Yeah, she should be almost evil 3. I almost have enough. If I remember correctly, I do have enough to make her evil 3, actually. So, yeah. That's about it. Alright. Um, I think I think the, the Miho is actually a pretty good idea. You can actually skill them up as well. It's, it's yeah, cheaper, definitely. It's cheaper to skill up them. Uh, like, the the three-star ones are cheaper to skill up. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll we'll look forward to that. Definitely, uh, like follow him on Twitch and and YouTube to to check that out once he has the guide out, and also take a look at his his mate, uh, his guide, his his super guide for Monster Super League. I'll have everything in the description. Um, you know, I'll I'll link everything. And yeah, thank thank you so much for for uh, doing this collab with me. No problem, man. Thank you so much for inviting me, bud. And it's a great time and hopefully you have a great night sleep because I know it's pretty late for you for doing this. It's, it's fine. Um, different time zone. <laughs> I, I think you you uh, you definitely do deserve a lot more viewers. Like you're you're super helpful for new newer players. You're like super nice, always willing to do those like reviews and everything. You know, when when people ask you and stuff. But yeah, that's I think that's pretty much it. So um, yeah, I'll see you guys. I'll see I'll see everyone uh, in the next video, and you can you guys can. Just go and check out uh, Asian Elite and his channel. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out.